The next gentleman to come on the stage Is a fella looking very good for his age He started many, many years ago And worked for 35 years with the mighty Sparrow Ladies and gents, let me tell you this This year he's celebrating 50 years in show business I am making fun I want a round of applause for Bill Trotman Sunny Manity. I looking good for my age. It's my 50th anniversary. All right, relator. Thank you. Fine, thank me and yourselves. Good. Well, I hot. I hot. I know you hot too. But don't dig nothing. After I gone, all you go cool off. And a lot of women, <clears throat> a lot of people go be cool because some people will wet themselves before I leave here. I, I'm a traveling man. You know, I've been traveling, traveling, traveling all over the world and other places. Yeah, I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, I've been traveling, I talk, I've been performing for doctors, lawyers, soldiers, nurses, teachers, children, even people. Actually, when I was leaving Trinidad to come up here, well, I had my brother take me to the airport. So, I jump in the car, his niece was in the car with him, and we're driving all the way to the airport. When we nearly reached the, you know, on the compound of the airport, we see a plane just about to land. And the little girl say, Uncle, look, 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 a male plane. I said, girl, that ain't no male plane. Them is the wheels hanging down. She said, uh -huh. oh, so we get off the plane, get out, come in the airport, and uh, decide, well, I'm going to take up. You know, it's a long time I didn't take up a BB plane. You see? I'm going to tell you why. You see, long years ago, people used to always say, when you're born, it's not this, um, you don't come through mother and thing. It is either the stock bring you or the plane bring you. You know how they used to fool your children a long time? The stock bring you. <laughs> well, boy, if it had come on, it's a good thing when I was born, they didn't have BWIA. Because all now I ain't come yet. You know, you know, no, I, or else I would have been really young. <laughs> I'd have come so much long later. No, serious. No, but you see, the stock, coming on the stock is something else. I know my friend, my good, good friend. He have a woman there, and all this stock children thing get to him. He's in the stock bring babies. It's seven children I have already, you know, seven. I had to find a way to stop the stock from bringing all these children. I say, man, is one thing to do to stop the stock. He said, where to do? I said, shoot the stock. It's a little risky business, but shoot the stock. You know, it wouldn't make no more children. Anyway, get on this plane, BWI. You know what BWI stands for? Beautiful women in the air. You know, they like that. I would have to say that, you know, because they are BWI people, but really and truly it means Britain's worst investment abroad. <laughs> I get on the plane, man, and the plane <laughs> take off. It's a troublesome thing to be on a BWI plane, but I love it. A plane take off. <laughs> and the engine, I could hear a voice come over the PA, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain here. Welcome to BWI. We are flying all the way to the United States. And just in case you, you have any worries, we'd like to tell you we have a very competent crew. We have a four-engine plane. And we have beautiful ladies, air hostesses, who will take care of you. Anything you wish, you just ask one of the ladies. Well, you know whenever they say, ask ladies, I first want something. Well, I did ask, but I ain't get so I'm there on the plane, and the plane going. No, 
and then the voice come over again. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain here. We just lost our number four engine. <laughs> but don't worry about it. We, we have a very comfortable... Re relax. Buy yourself a brandy, a cup of coffee or something. Everything will be all right. But I'm going along on this plane going, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you go through one of them air pockets. You know how the plane does go through the air pocket and go and you suddenly drop. <gasps> ah. Boy, I tell you, I feel that. I say, oh gosh, when I feel it, so I feel like next to me, Bolin, you can see what the plane just do. I say, yeah, you should have seen what I just do. <laughs> another one, another one, jump up. So, gosh, this plane getting shaky, shaky. He said, oh gosh, somebody do something, somebody do something religious now, please. Oh gosh, somebody do something religious. I get up, took off my hat, passed it around, and made a collection. <laughs> yeah, but the plane is going along. And when the plane going, you know, when you get through all them air pockets, sometimes it gets to your ears. You know, it clog up your ears and you could hardly hear. And all of a sudden I couldn't hear, so I called one of the air hostesses. Miss, um, you have to help me. I can't hear. My ears clog up. She, she gave me some gum. She said, chew on that. And I was there chewing. But I didn't help. So when she passed again, I said, I still can't hear, you know. She said, well, drop your jaws. I said, what? She said, drop your jaws. And I misunderstood. But it's a good thing I just wear Bermudas. I dropped. So it is, we're going along and the plane going. <laughs> and the... Voice came over again. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain here once more. We just lost our number three engine. But don't worry about it. We, everything's going to be okay. We take care of every business. Fasten your seat belts. Everything will be all right. I fell out. Get down, a rich man sitting down on the plane. Get down on the knees and he start to pray. He said, Lord, I have a lot of money in the bank. Oh gosh, if you put this plane down safely, I give you half of my money. A priest sit down behind him, watching him and listening well, boy. Priest and our next priest, you know, two priests. And the priest sit down there, the other one ain't paying no attention. He doing crossword puzzle. And this one, and then asking the other fella, what is, give me a four letter word for a woman ending with U-N-T. And this priest say, aunt, A-U-N-T. And if a priest rub off where he had it. <laughs> you guess where he had it, I know. You look like one of that. Anyway, <laughs> so, so the plane is going along plane is going along and and the voice come again ladies and gentlemen we just lost our number two engine but uh, we relax yourselves we're getting there pretty soon everything is gonna be all right just then I see a fella come running down the center of the aisle the pilot with a parachute strapped to his back and he said ladies and gentlemen don't worry don't worry don't panic Everything's going to be all right. We're just having a little problem with the landing gear. And I'm going on ahead in front to warn them at the airport. I say, Jesus Christ. Bye. You know, when you get on them plane, nowadays it's really hard. Besides having to deal with that, sometimes you just have to sit in the cockpit. You, you, you never see some of them air hostesses with a short skirt. They just call it flight skirt. It's so short. <laughs> it not, you not only see the cockpit, but you also see the pilot waving at you. So, so <laughs> but it's it rough, you know, when if you're coming from Jamaica and have to catch a stand, I mean, stand in the cockpit, is a terrible thing. Or sometimes you had to sit in the WC from the time you leave Jamaica to Trinidad. All of them things does happen. So the plane going up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain here one more time. We just lost our number one engine, but um, if you look down in the port side, I mean starboard side of the plane, down in the water, you'll see three little spots. That's your crew. This is a recorded announcement. <laughs> uh, well, 
I could do a little thing, I jump behind the plane and I spin the wheel wrong and I turn it a couple of times so, and I make a, a, a left turn and a right turn and I duck down <laughs> and I crash, <laughs> mash my brakes, I lose two, three tires on the way coming down, but then nothing. And the first man off the plane was the rich fella and the priest running behind him, young man there, hey. I heard what you said on the plane. He said, who that? I make the Lord a better deal. I say, if you ever catch me on a plane again, I give you all my money. <laughs> but that was all right. I get off the plane and I decide to travel, go down south in the United States, in them places. I decide I can take a taxi, jump in the hoods. I will come on, rent a car, jump in hoods to go, you know, hoods, hoods. Like, but like they break my leg. That's why they call it hoods. Anyway, so I'm going, driving along, and I find I can't get down there so easy. Anyhow, all them police down south in the United States just give real horrors. I see this big bush pull up, and the police step out of the berries. And, and the man want to give me a ticket for having my windshield wiper going the wrong way on a one-way street. And then they want to give me another ticket for... <laughs> for speeding when I was fixing a flat. I say, hey, what's this? He say, didn't you see you went through a red light? I say, yeah. He said, what do you do that for? I say, I see all the white folks going through the green light, so I went, I thought the red light was for us. <laughs> anyway, I drive and I drive and I see, you know when you're on the road long, you just get into them little problems. After a while, days on the road, I ain't get a little woman and I'm getting a rising problem every now and then. So I want to take care of business. I see a big sign saying, Ma Mabel Ho House, 50 miles. I said, God, that's for me. I step on the gas. I'm ah! going on the road. See another sign saying, Ma Mabel Ho House, 20 miles. Well, more speed. I'm driving. When I get around the corner, so I say, Eh, ah, Ma Mabel Ho House coming up, round the corner. So I jump out, reach the mommy house, ha, fix myself, and I go on in. This old, old woman come out. Yes, can I help you? I said, use my Mabel. She said, yes. I said, well, look, I've been on the road for so long, and I want to take care of business with you. Um, help fix me up. She said, how much money you got? Well, I know I had more than $50, you know, but I say, um, I think I have about $23 on me. She said, all right, give me that. She take it. And she said, come on in. And she lead me in through one. She said, go through that door. And I went through the door. And as I go through the door, it closed behind me. And I realized I'm outside in the yard. <laughs> so I look back and I see a big sign over the door saying, you've just been screwed by Ma Mabel. <laughs> so I run back wrong and I say, hey, Ma. She said, you again. I said, yes, man, I need to take care of business, fix me up. She said, how much you got? I got two dollars remain. She said, come in. She carried me inside in a whole ricketing bed, and she mash up me. She rose condos me. She rose condos me, and, and I finish. I feel all right, and I go on. When I go outside by the car, I get an itch. So I, I say, what? Take out that. Check it out. Eh, eh. But this, I see these little creatures walking all over, I see. This woman give me crabs, man. I go on back. She say, you again? I say, yes, you give me crabs. She say, what you expect for two dollars? Lobsters? <laughs> well, I get, out of, I get out of that. I get out of that. No, but I have to travel. I always have to travel. And sometimes, when you travel, you go into all the different institutions. You ever realize, like the hospital, the madhouse, the, the churches, you know, these different places, the jail. Well, I went in the madhouse one time to do a show. And as I'm in the place there, I see a fella lean up against the wall with the ears to the wall. So for a long time, I say, man, what happened? What are you listening to? He said, put your ears in your hair. So I put my ears and I stand up for about five minutes. I say, I ain't hear nothing. He said, me neither. It's been like that whole day. 
So I walk away from him and I'm going down to the other place to go to do the show. I see a fellow on top, a ladder, way up on top, a ladder painted, painting the roof. And the next one pass and tell him, hold on to your brush, I'm borrowing the ladder. I say, working in them places is nice, you know, get experience. So I went in the jail, perform, fella come out and say, Bill Trotman, you know they're breaking out of jail quite often in Trinidad now. You had to help me. I say, see this? I only come to do a show for all you to keep all you in here, man. He say, you had to help me break out of here tonight. I say, how I could do that? He said, well, you give me a half, and that musician fella give me a half. I say, what that go do? He said, well, if you give me a half and he give me a half, we could put the two together and it gonna make a hole and I could crawl through it and get out. That too clean for all you. I always figure that, you know. But I like. I had to travel, I had to travel, and Tommy Joseph is a fella who makes me feel like I am not a real man, because he's a real macho man. Every time I travel and I go by Tommy, I just find out that he is a fella who does show off plenty. He macho, real macho. Every time you go by Tommy and you take two drinks, you watch him, he take two drinks and he ready to do, and telling your wife, Darling, come go upstairs and screw now. She said, oh gosh, Tommy, you always have your friends come in the place. You can't be a little more cool than that. You're so crude. You could always use a code word. Say, ah, <clears throat> let me put something in your washing machine. He said, code word, washing machine. He said, all right, all right. One day, when she was in the mood, she called him, Tommy, you have anything you'd like to put in my washing machine? She said, uh-uh. Eh -eh. I had a, he said, uh-uh, eh -eh, I had a small bundle and I did it by hand. <laughs> yeah, well, you should see him, you know, talking about small bundle. He just take a shower. When he take a shower and he bathe, so, when he, then he bathe and he come out of the bathroom, stand up in front of the mirror, up, and mine is physique. Oh gosh, look at that. Look at that! Eh? Look at that! Look at, look at that! Say, if I had two inches more, I'd be a king. Your wife walking same time. She say yes. If you had two inches less, you'd be a queen. <laughs> so he watches. He say, Gosh, I just don't bathe and thing, but this body need tanning. You know, look at it. It want to tan. So he going down on the beach and tan it. And he go down on the beach. And he lay down, dig a hole in the sand, lie down in it, cover his whole body out, up, and leave that outside. And when he lay down there, two old maids come walking down the beach. One old maid was trying to die, and the other one was dying to try. One old maid said to the other, like you hit, you're smelling hair burning. Oh gosh! Look at that! Look at that! And the other one said, what is that? She said, Gosh, girl, when, when I was 10 years of age, I used to be curious about that. Hmm? When I became 20 years of age, I used to like that. <laughs> I, uh, then as I moved up, become 30 years of age, I used to pay for that. When I was 40, I used to pay, I used to beg for that. When I became 50 years of age, I'd do anything for that. Now I'm 60 years of age, the damn thing growing wild all over the place. So, every time, every time, every time, we are checked by Tommy. I think, all right, I'm going to go back to school. I think I need to go back to school for all you. All right, I was in school one day. And my teacher called on me. Trotman, stand up. So I stand up. Yes, miss. She says, mental. Let's see how good are you at mental. I say, all right, miss. She say, how much is two and two? I say, four, miss. That's good. Let's hear you. Three and three. Six, miss. She said, that is cheating, Trotman. You're counting on your fingers. Put your both hands in your pocket. I said, all right, miss. She said, how much is five and five? Eight. 
11 miss. You didn't know I could have come that good, eh? But anyway, so I say, Miss, I live in this school and I go in outside. And she said, Go and stand outside until recess is over. Well, we stay outside and pitch, pitch, pitch with all them and all the girls outside. But it, you know, I was only pitch with girls because I like pitching into you. You know, you see that? The police pick up a fella and three women who was carrying on there so on the corner. They pick up three women and a man. They say the three of them was soliciting and the man was peddling. And the day of the case, the magistrate asked them, each one, Madam, where's your occupation? And she said, you know, I'm a model. He said, you're the model. You are a model? He said, yes, I was modeling. And this policeman picked me up. He said, you are a model, pay $5, stand down, bloody old who. Next, where's your occupation? She said, um, I am a waitress. He said, you are a waitress? All right. I suppose you was waiting to collect your tips. Stand down, pay $500. Next, where's your occupation? She said, your honor, I'm a prostitute. And if you're going to charge me, charge me one time. Let me go back on the corner and get my money, hustle me dollars to pay you. He said, oh, but that's very honest of you, madam. And for your honesty, I think it's honorable that I should give you an honorable discharge. You are free to go. Young man, what's your occupation? He said, you're not either prostitute too. Thank you.